very well tell the mayor what he's going to pay his employees in his department. We we should have uh, only uh, input for, for our uh, people we work with. However, in, in positions throughout the city, it's always been a standing uh, practice that longevity goes into the picture. And you can't expect that someone coming in off the street is going to pay X number of dollars just because he's, they're working with someone else who's making that amount of money. It's got to be a matter of starting at the bottom That's and true. working your way up. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, just to kind of give you guys a heads up as far as um, from my department, there was no raises, you know, that you know, we had talked. Um, one receives a contractual raise, so they got that in April. Um, we're also keeping in mind that we have two unions that we're going to start negotiating with, that's CGM and Police Command. So that's also, there will be, if there's a successful contract, I'm sure there will be some sort of raise built into that, whether it be a, a signing bonus or a percentage, either yearly or something like that. That's something that we'll have to negotiate, um, but that's something else. But in the same sense, that's what we do. We, 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 we meet with the department heads and they say, hey, we put in raises for this person, this person, and this person. And, you know, unfortunately in this contract or in this uh, this uh, budget, you know, there was a, a shortfall. So we had to kind of eliminate that. But there's, you know, there's some leeway with department heads in there. Council? I want, I want to clarify too, this is not a reflection on the person. This is uncomfortable. It is. Um, but wage increases are contractual, they're performance based, they're longevity, they're complex. I mean, so again, I don't have enough data to make the decision. I'm not saying whether I would or wouldn't um, want to do it. I just think we need the data and, and just adjusting pay. I've been in HR a long time, just adjusting pay because someone else is making an amount, I don't think is a good practice. I think you have to look at the experience, the job role, I mean, yes, they're both confidential secretary roles, but what are their job duties? Um, and then the, I know you mentioned um, council lady thing. <laughs> um, with hiring off the street right now, I mean, hiring is difficult, so we are going to have to, when you hire positions, and unless they're contractual, we may have to pay people more. It's hard. It's next to impossible to hire people right now, um, and everyone is paying higher wages. So you're competing with that. So just it is it's unfortunate because you never want to pay someone off the street the same or more than a current employee, but it it, it is difficult right now. Um, and it's always hard you're chasing. Like when people are at an organization for a long time, their wage is going up maybe three percent, the market's going up higher than that. Good chair. Council. Uh, the reason for for my thought on this was not parity. It was uh, actually experience. And if you look at the data, if you know the data, uh, it should be adjusted. So that's that's all we'll say tonight about it and it should be taken care of. Mr. Chair. I forgot a couple of points that I wanted to make about this too. So having said that about the way that I believe the charter works and and you know the department heads and their employees and you know but I think that our as county people our if we, if we don't think that something is right that we have the process or we have the we can take it out of the budget at budget time and I know that things are contractual and you know within you know people have contracts and things like that so I was hoping that that we could get into a practice where raises aren't given with outside of contracts and if they are and if they are given outside of contracts those transaction reports would be given to us so we can see it and not at budget time if any raises are given outside of contracts we should be told about it and so we can um you know like merit uh, bonuses or raises um, but i think that our our job is to um is to um, with the budget and what we do if we don't like what's happening with bonuses or raises outside of contracts. I think that that's the way that we correct them. And I believe that how it works. Mr. Chairman, I, I think one of the reasons I can't speak for the past, but there was quite a long time where there was no contracts in place with no.
contractual raises and all that. So I think that's where it was kind of going that way. Um, I agree with you, Councilwoman, that if there's built-in raises and all that, unless there's a serious need for a, a merit, you know, increase. Um, but we, 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 do, we do have two unions that we're going to start negotiating with. Um, but I agree, any raises outside of the contractual raise, To my knowledge, no. Uh, but it is a big budget, but to my knowledge, top of my head. So there is no plan except for contractual. Correct. There's there's uh, there's two built-in raises in one department, and that is the senior side. Okay. Those are the only uh, built-in raises that are in the one department. Right. Ninety-nine percent sure. Yeah. So a lot of questions, but I, yeah. I do believe that. Discussion. I don't, you know, the, going forward, I'm, I'm hearing good arguments, pro and con. It is not you know, mine to arbitrate the, the final, uh, ultimately, I think, through the mayor's office and the HR. Just like, I would need some sort of recommendation because I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but much like the selection of the <laughs> council secretary. Uh, Mayor's office polled the individual council members for their opinion, and and then and then the mayor uh, through HR made the final determination. Fair enough. <coughs> Will we get data? I mean, as far as I know, we have the theory from the budget, but the be... I can I can send some sort of information saying based on the polling that I've done.
times where we made a budget amendment before the fiscal year even started. So, um, so absolutely, because uh, the budget that we're looking at is effective July 1 for fiscal year 23 budget. So, um, you know, we still have a couple months before that that date. So, if we have to amend the budget, we can always amend the budget before July 1. So. Any further discussion? Okay. Is this all discussion we're having on the budget, or is that later? Uh, okay. No, we, we kind of we got into that, but I believe as we're, we've got 7.5, 7.6, so, so there's definitely time for additional discussion. Uh, so let's let's focus then on the items for 7.5. So if I may, through chair, um, 7.5 and 7.6 um, are kind of in conjunction with each other. Uh, 7.5 is really just a motion to receive a file memo. Uh, really talks about the heavy rollback calculations and truth and taxation calculations. Um, it ties into the 7.6, which is the actual approval of the proposed millage rate. Um, so, like I said, the 7.5 backup, you know, is, is my memo, and then it has a you know kind of a bunch of calculations behind it, right? Uh, but what it does is it it's, it talks about the heavy rollback because our Taxable value is going up approximately 5.6%, but the state only allows us, because of their inflation rate, to go up 3.3%. So what that does is that calculates a heavy rollback for the appropriate villages. And so on the backup for 7.6 is what the proposed villages for the city is. So uh, just to kind of go over, sorry, to go over each one too, if anybody's watching from home, and, and kind of go into details if there was a rollback on that millage or not. So, so overall, the city millage is anticipated to be 25.8073 mills. That's a decrease of 